Good afternoon, everybody, and to those on the West Coast, good morning. My name is Jack Sadag. I'm the VP of Global Sales for the Advanced Solutions Group, and wanted to take a moment to thank you all for joining us for today's webinar. The topic of today's session is maximizing your tripwire investment by leveraging adaptive threat protection. Our R&D teams have been hard at work so that we can offer you, our customers, unprecedented value for your tripwire investment. We're excited to share with you some of that today. Vulnerability management is no longer an isolated process within information security. It doesn't exist in a vacuum inside the enterprise simply running periodic scans. Existing methods of integrating vulnerability management results with other data, usually through a big data reporting strategy, do little to close existing cyber threat gaps. In this session, we'll explore how vulnerability scan can produce vulnerability intelligence and how that intelligence can be integrated with other sources of context from within information security to produce more effective and efficient detection, response, and prevention. By the end of the session today, our goal is to educate you on the new capabilities of Tripwire Enterprise and how integrating vulnerability management with Tripwire Enterprise can improve threat detection and response. Our presenter today is Dwayne Melanson. Dwayne is Tripwire's VP of Research and Development and our CTO. Dwayne is a published author and cybersecurity expert. Dwayne's commentary, in fact, has been featured regularly in publications such as BBC, Forbes, and The Guardian, and has been interviewed on Fox News and NPR's All Things Considered and Marketplace. Dwayne regularly coaches Fortune 500 CISOs and CIOs like yourselves on how to effectively communicate cybersecurity risks to the boardroom and to the C-suite. Dwayne entered the tech industry as a support analyst and hasn't slowed down since. Dwayne has also held other senior management positions at high-tech firms like Symantec and DirectWeb. During the session today, if you have any questions whatsoever on the content or on the topic at hand, please do type them in the Q&A square at the bottom right-hand corner of the WebEx. And we will follow up with each of you individually with responses to your questions. Without further ado, I'd like to hand this over to Dwayne and to jump into this very important topic. Dwayne, go ahead. Great. Thanks a lot, Jack, and uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I'll talk a, a little bit about adaptive threat protection, but uh, one of the things I'd like to start with is a little bit of uh, what's going on out in the market in terms of the threat landscape. You know, you, you're probably bombarded with the same kinds of numbers from the Verizon Data Breach Investigations Report and other kinds of stats that people throw at you all the time, just like I am. But you know, if you zoom out a little bit and don't focus so much on the specifics of the number, but on the story that they're trying to tell us, then uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So the data shows that most of the breaches that are happening in the news are not using zero day, you know, brand new unknown uh, kinds of attacks. They're really mostly starting with known patchable vulnerabilities. So, uh, you know, when you look at this, the data shows not only is it kind of known things, configuration weaknesses, patchable vulnerabilities, but um, it's also focusing a lot on compromised servers. And, you know, the, the fact of the matter is it's taking us longer to detect and resolve these breaches. So, you know, at a high level, what this means is that, you know, people are taking advantage of things that are, you know, a lot of them fall into the category of good IT hygiene. And it's taking us a lot longer to notice than it really should. So when we look at what companies have done about that, uh, you know, a lot of it has been, hey, give me more data, send me more stuff. You know, I want to look at threat intelligence, I want to look at vulnerabilities, I want to look at my configs, I want to look at logs and all that. And uh, the challenge is, you know, we bring it all together, we try to put it in one big place and, you know, the promise of big data. And uh, as a, a friend of mine, Tony Sager, always says, what you end up with is, you know, we hear about the fog of war, this is the fog of more. So it's a lot of data uh, and it's interesting but it's not particularly actionable because in a lot of cases it lacks prioritization, it lacks context, and it's really hard for us to make sense of it even after we have the data. So uh, for us, you know, more data is good, but it isn't the entire solution. It's just a good start. So um, what I like to think of is that, you know, what we've really got are several gaps that are concerning to the enterprise. and. Um, you know, I refer to it as the enterprise cyber threat gap. And there are really kinds of, you know, if you look at 
the clock being your enemy here, there are three specific areas that are challenging. The first is, have we been breached? And we refer to this as the detection gap. So this is the time between the actual breach occurring or at least evidence showing up on your systems and you knowing about it. And when you look at that, that's the, you know, the time to discover that Mandian and Verizon talk about in their breach reports. And a lot of people are focused on trying to close that gap. And then once you know about an issue, you've got another issue, which is the response gap. You know, how long does it take me between the time I know I've got a problem to be able to contain and limit the damage? And, you know, ultimately I've got to be able to answer the question, I know I've been breached at this point, how bad is it? And then to me, more importantly is, you know, once I recover from this, the third gap is the prevention gap. So how long will it take me to put in some preventive measures so that I'm not compromised in the same way again and that I get faster? And, you know, this is really a cycle. So the more I learn, the better I can detect, the better I can respond, and the better I can prevent. And, uh, you know, these are the challenging gaps that a lot of organizations are struggling with. So when we talk about trying to close that gap, you know, why is it so hard? Well, one, the advanced attacks are making things a lot more difficult to detect. You know, they're faster to compromise. Uh, a lot of them are uh, happening, you know, in the blink of an eye, and, you know, there's just a, an overwhelming number of, uh, of attacks happening. Second is either limited resources or time, and, you know, I think of this also as a skills gap, too, where, you know, not only do I need to be able to have somebody paying attention to this all the time, I need them to be able to understand what they're looking at and be able to quickly make a determination about whether uh, something that's happening in our environment is good or bad. And it is increasingly difficult to take people from, say, an operations-focused availability function and have them understand enough about the security context to be able to do this. And then you have the security people who are, uh, you know, overloaded because there are so few of them and you try to throw everything at them and it's, it's tough to make sense of this. Uh, the other aspect is that we are applying a lot more tools in the environments these days and uh, they're not adding a lot of context. You know, one of the, the challenges I believe in a lot of environments is that we have a lot of technical context. We have a lot of information about feeds and speeds and scores and you know, things like that, but we don't necessarily have the ability to connect that back to why it's relevant to the business and which systems are more valuable to the business or less valuable. So it makes it difficult to do a risk-oriented or risk-centric security management approach, and all of those things make it harder to close those gaps. Um, so our solution to this is to try to provide you with the means to pull all this together to give you not only the integration and look at all the data together, but to be able to add some context, not just the technical context, but the business context, and then to be able to automate some of the pre-processing and the early decisions on this so that uh, what you can do is kind of throw away the things that are not a big deal to the organization, leave behind a much smaller population of things that are are uh, more actionable. And we've done that not only through our own products, but through some of the partnerships that we've brought to bear. You know, so we already provide uh, capabilities to do log and event intelligence, to collect information about the configurations and the strengths and weaknesses of your endpoints, to identify vulnerabilities. And um, recently, we've opened up our ecosystem uh, pretty aggressively to a number of partners to deal with threat intelligence. Uh, what that allows us to do is bring better capabilities to bear so we can do more automated and advanced threat analytics and help you, um, you know, really, as things change in your environment, reevaluate your security continuously and uh, try to uh, identify weaknesses in your attack surface so that you can close those and uh, protect yourself from things like zero-day detection, insider threat, and so forth. And we do that not only, um, you know, through just making action, taking actions and making decisions, but also by collecting information you can use for analysis after the fact, for forensics and so forth, but more importantly to arm your um, security incident response teams to be more prepared and more capable when it comes time to respond to some of these threats. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about how this, this works. You know, we'll start with uh, an area that we refer to as vulnerability intelligence. Now, a lot of you may be familiar with Tripwire Enterprise, and you see it as a, a known source of truth for information about the state of your systems. You know, we can tell you how things are changing, whether those are good or bad, and to me, that's a critical difference. You know, things change all the time. The question is, what bad changes or suspicious changes are happening in my environment that I need to know about? 
um, how do I provide traceability and a history of the integrity of my files? And then, <coughs> excuse me, how do I, um, you know, from an agent perspective, how do I really give you inside out visibility? You know, so we're not necessarily from this perspective as concerned uh, with things like um, the network traffic. We're more concerned about things that are happening on the host. But that only gives you part of the picture. So if you look at the right side of the screen, how do we bring in information from a different perspective? Tripwire IP360 allows you to discover new devices and profile them and do device and application discovery so that not only can we tell you what's in the environment, but we can derive what's what a particular piece of infrastructure's role is by looking at what services are exposed on that system, what applications are installed, by assessing those things for known weaknesses and vulnerabilities, uh, assessing the applications on those systems, and giving you that outside-in view. So you have the inside-out view of Tripwire Enterprise that's monitoring from the perspective of the system itself, and Tripwire IP360 that's looking from the outside in, looking for the other side of that. And when you put the two together, uh, it allows you to be very uh, proactive and to respond quickly when something unexpected happens. So we've now, um, you know, historically uh, the products have operated alongside each other. Now we have them uh, with a tight integration that improves the, you know, it's a definitely a one plus one equals three. So it improves the effectiveness of both products. And the integration uh, delivers on that value of adaptive threat protection. So what we're doing now is we're able to give you a continuous view and a continuous analysis of what is, are the known weaknesses and the attack surface problems in your organization, uh, which of those can be addressed through configuration, strengthening, or patching uh, to give you a continuous way of automating the assessment of your systems so that you don't require a you know human to be ever vigilant to be successful. You can actually uh, allow people to, at the slightest change, determine whether it's good or bad, determine whether it's suspicious, and elevate it to an analyst so they can make a decision and take action. And the result that we found is that uh, it significantly reduces the overall cyber threat risk because we're able to analyze, um, you know, sources and identify signs of compromise. We're able to uh, let you know when people are violating your policies that may lead to some kind of an insider compromise. And we're giving you the ability to, to um, really take, get a handle on your overall cyber threat risk and, and take more of a proactive approach to being able to, uh, to you know, I, would, I, I call it an informed or a data-driven security approach rather than a, uh, an event-driven or a reactive security approach. Um, one of the other advantages we mentioned earlier, and I want to go into a little more detail on, is the value of automation. You know, so when you look at how most, uh, a lot of uh, organizations operate, it's very manual. You know, so uh, with other vulnerability management solutions, you might scan your environment, you get a report, you find assets and vulnerabilities, and you know, you get a, a limited set of results. Um, so people tend to do these, you know, maybe once a quarter, produce a PDF report. Uh, go through a spreadsheet exercise to manually prioritize the results, and then you know they'll hand it off typically to an ops team to go and take action and resolve some of these things. Um, the challenge here is that you're you're now you now have to manually correlate the results to what you find in Tripwire Enterprise. So you can get to the answer, but it takes a long time, and it tends to be very labor intensive, error prone, and slow. And that's really the, the challenge that we sought to, uh, to go after with this integration between Tripwire Enterprise and IP360. Because you know, ultimately what you want to be able to do is uh, detect and respond to these and close the gaps very quickly. And um, you know, once you know what the problems are, Tripwire Enterprise makes it easier to do that. But we're still left with a gap of I do a vulnerability scan or a vulnerability assessment. Uh, I want to take action, but there's a lot of manual effort in between. So um, with the integration that we're talking about today, we, we've been able to take a lot of that latency out of the process. You know, first, Tripwire IP360 will uh, automatically, in an automated fas uh, fashion, comprehensively profile the assets, tell you what's on them, tell, me how, tell you how they're vulnerable, and uh, even go down to enumerating the applications that are on those systems. Um, 
It also will prioritize. I mentioned earlier the lack of that business context in a lot of other solutions. Well, uh, not only are we able to tell you what's on your environment from an OS perspective or from a you know CBSS score or, or um, you know patch uh, level perspective, we're able to also make some assumptions about uh, what an application does. You know, if we find a specific application on a system, we can attach a business tag to that to be able to tell you that, you know, this appears to be part of payroll or it appears to be part of a revenue bearing application or it's houses uh, PII. You know, so we, we're able to give you some more business context to allow you to prioritize this. Um, in addition, we do have the technical scoring that allows you to score each vulnerability that we discover based on its complexity, based on the potential impact if it's exploited, and give you the context there so that you can deal with the most critical vulnerabilities that affect your most business important assets along the way. Uh, what this allows you to do is then integrate with Tripwire Enterprise, take advantage of what uh, we know from a, a system-centric perspective, and allow you to change how you monitor. So if you have a system that is a high business criticality system that has a highly um, you know, damaging or potentially damaging technical risk, then you can adjust how you monitor that system and uh, dynamically, uh, effectively pay more attention to um, Sorry, my, I accidentally hit the, the wrong key here. Uh, you can pay more attention to systems that have, um, you know, critical issues than you would to a system that has no known critical issues. And what this allows you to do is um, intelligently decide where you're going to spend your time, what you pay attention to most, and then uh, it helps you with an informed response so that you can detect and respond to threats more quickly, you can harden systems that are weak, you can patch things that are highly business critical, and uh, you have a choice of either doing that in a manual fashion by handing off a, a, a ticket or a work order to someone in the ops organization, or in many cases, Tripwire Enterprise can automatically resolve known configuration weaknesses on your systems and apply those changes to you as just a part of your normal day-to-day -day operations. So what you end up with is rather than a time-consuming manual process, you end up with a continuous visibility um, capability that is uh, allowing you to you know, not spend a lot of time connecting the dots manually. It connects the dots for you and then allows you to take informed action and automate that so that you can quickly uh, resolve and reduce any kinds of threats from outside vulnerabilities. Um, so when we tie this back to uh, how the, it relates to the three gaps I talked about, you know, one, you're able to close the detection gap by detecting threats faster in a more automated fashion. You're able to respond more quickly because not only are you arming your, your technicians and your security responders with information about, um, you know, problems you've seen, you're also able to give them some business context so that, you know, all vulnerabilities and all systems are not created equal. I can now focus on the things that mean the most to the business, that have the highest technical risk, and uh, I can really make better use of my resources and keep people from playing a game of whack-a-mole by dealing with significant issues earlier in the process before a loss occurs. And what this allows you to do then is strengthen that prevention gap so that, um, you know, this is an integrated system that can inform itself. As we discover uh, vulnerable assets, we inform Tripwire Enterprise to pay more attention to them. We can identify issues earlier. We can automatically resolve and remediate those. And we can learn from that so that the overall system of security becomes much stronger over time. Uh, now let's talk about, you know, I, I mentioned uh, our, we've been opening up our ecosystem for threat intelligence. Let's talk a little more about how that works. You know, so what we mean when we talk about advanced threat detection is, first of all, identifying all the changes that are happening across my environment and then narrowing those down to my high value systems so I can focus on what's most important and take a more risk-based approach to this. Um, the next is to allow you to investigate the change, determine if it's suspicious, and uh, where possible, do that in an automated fashion so that you have a higher likelihood of discovering it without uh, relying on, you know, a human noticing it. And then the third is to kick off an incident response workflow. So it's about identifying changes, determining if they're good, bad, or otherwise, and then kicking off an incident response to be able to deal with that. 
So when we start with uh, the investigation, you know, Tripwire Enterprise customers are already doing this today by evaluating their systems continuously, looking for things that are either out of policy or that are that are a known uh, sign of cybercrime or system compromise, and then elevating those. Um, the threat intelligence aspect of this really adds threat context. So um, rather than just saying, I have a system, I know that it has an unauthorized change, I'm able to you know, uh, uh, tag it with things that say it looks like it has signs of a man in the middle attack or it looks like it has a, uh, you know, a new listening port that shouldn't be there. So to give you more specific information about the the threats that are actually showing up on the system, or you know, in some cases, just knowing that a new process that's running that should not, you know, never has typically run on that system, uh, will clue you in that uh, something unusual is happening on that system. Um, so when we look at this, how it can be applied, you know, first of all, you can use this to detect malware on a system. So, um, you know, even if we don't know. Uh, what a binary is on a system, we can tell you that it's an unknown or suspicious one. Um, through our integrations with threat intelligence partners, which I'll go to in, in just a couple of minutes here, we can not only identify um, that it is a suspicious or malicious system, but uh, so malicious um, compromise, rather, we can tell you specifically what was placed on the system. And this allows you to identify the zero days and the unknown threats. Um, and through our integrations with third parties, you know, many of these uh, have sandboxing approaches where they will take an unknown um, binary, they'll, what they call detonating it, uh, or execute it in a controlled environment, and then they basically speed up time to be able to watch for um, suspicious behavior by this particular executable. Um, we have a real-time integration with these threat services that allows that once they identify something to be suspicious, uh, we can uh, be informed directly through Tripwire Enterprise and we can uh, you know, basically incorporate that into the way that we monitor for malicious or suspicious activities going forward. Uh, the advantage of this too is that it allows you to take advantage of some of the community um, IOCs or indicators of compromise. So when someone in another organization sees something that they deem to be suspicious or malicious, they can inform the network. We can consume that information and uh, instantly we become more aware and more proactive about new and emerging threats. So here's how the workflow works for Tripwire Enterprise. We identify files on your critical assets. We um, analyze the hashes. When we see something we don't recognize, you know, I mentioned we can tell you things that are known good and known bad. When we encounter an unknown new binary on a system, we'll send that out to our partner for analysis. And initially, we'll send a file hash. And they'll let us know if they know about it or not. And if um, for example, they recognize the hash and they know it to be bad, then we will, in Tripwire Enterprise, mark it as known malicious and known bad and uh, be able to deal with it proactively going forward. If it, they uh, say that it's unknown, then we can actually send the file itself to the partner. They can detonate it in a sandbox and they can tell us if it exhibits uh, malicious behavior and then instantly we're informed of those results and we update our controls uh, based on any identified new malware. Um, we're doing this with a number of partners, including Soltra, CrowdStrike, Palo Alto, iSight Partners, ThreatCloud, Cisco, and LastLine. And um, we do this through a combination of, of uh, you know, vendor-specific integrations, as well as embracing open standards like Sticks and Taxi to be able to communicate with this uh, ecosystem of partners. So when we look at how we identify zero days and suspicious files, um, then this is the, the other aspect where I was, I was talking about uh, if they don't recognize the hash, then we send the entire file out for detonation and analysis. And uh, kind of the same workflow applies. They respond. They tell us if it is uh, malicious or not. And then we update the controls within Tripwire Enterprise to be able to be more intelligent about how we respond to that. Um, and we can also tell you if it shows up on any of your other systems in the environment. Um, the third one, I talked about the indicators of compromise and being able to tie things into this community 
kind of vigilance approach. Um, we obtain the indicators of compromise from threat intelligence vendors, uh, or it could be, you know, in some cases you may receive that from the Department of Homeland Security or from other sources. Uh, you, we can automatically import those into Tripwire Enterprise, and once we know about those, we can um, quickly assess your environment to see if you have any of those known indicators of compromise present in your environment. We can update our controls um, so that we can either alert or report or auto-remediate the issues that we find based on known indicators of compromise. And again, you see the, the partners that we're integrating with to be able to uh, to address this capability. So when you tie all this together, really what we're talking about is um, giving you the ability to deal with zero-day um, compromises to really get ahead of some of the advanced threats that are happening in, in the environment um, and out in the, the threat landscape, and to be able to respond more proactively and more effectively. You know, so through some of these integrations, if you happen to be using some of these um, ecosystem providers, uh, we have the ability to integrate very quickly and easily with them to be able to provide um, not only leverage in Tripwire Enterprise and IP360, but to be able to take advantage and get more use out of uh, the information you get, for example, from uh, an external threat provider, to be able to take advantage of their different perspective. You know, I talked about how Tripwire Enterprise has a lot of perspective from the, the standpoint of the endpoints and systems and servers and so forth and the state of your systems. IP360 has the perspective of things that are happening on your network and how systems are vulnerable and what applications are, are uh, out in your environment. Well, this brings in the perspective of other people. You know, so the threats that are being observed in other companies, the threats that are being observed by law enforcement and, and uh, research agencies, and allows you to strengthen your defense using the effort that they've expended already. So, you know, when you look at this, Tripwire plus these um, integrations with third-party providers gives you a much more holistic view um, so that you can close that detection gap, you can respond quickly and appropriately, and you can ultimately prevent breaches from occurring in the first place because you're better armed and you have a, uh, a much more continuous approach that scales well through the automation and uh, the kind of continuous vigilance and oversight of your environment. So if um, you want to get more information about this, one, we'll be following up with you after this uh, with some information about, uh, for example, how to get a copy of these slides and uh, answer any additional questions you might have. But we also have a vulnerability intelligence solution brief that goes into more detail about this available at tripwire.com. Um, we'd love to walk you through this and show you in real time how this works. So um, let us know if you'd like to request a demo. And we also have um, some good information to give you more of a perspective on IP360, IP360 and uh, Tripwire Enterprise uh, up on our website. So with that, I would like to uh, thank you all for joining us. And if you submitted questions, we'll be following up after the fact with those. We'll also provide information about how to uh, view a replay of this webcast. And um, once again, I'd like to thank you for your time, and I encourage you to uh, take a, a look at Tripwire Vulnerability Intelligence and how it can help you protect yourself from the advanced threats that are out there. Thank you.